Meanwhile, there's the surge in coronavirus cases around the country. Also has many wondering about when another stimulus package is coming. Take you live now. You can see the Senate there uh, in session this morning. Chuck Grassley delivering there his opening remarks as we await the latest on that package. There's been a lot of talk about it. Hasn't been done. When can it get done? Here to weigh in is Republican Congressman from Florida, Michael Waltz. He's also on the House Armed Services Committee member and a retired Army Green Beret. Sir, sir, always thank you so much for your service. And thank you for coming on the program. We just d dove in right there. We saw uh, Senator Chuck Grassley speaking. Um, there's so much talk about a new relief bill. Do you think we'll see one before the end of the year? You know, we could have one right now as we speak if uh, Speaker Pelosi would allow it. There's $138 billion already appropriated from the CARES Act sitting in the Treasury ready to go for small businesses through the Paycheck Protection Program that saved so many over the summer, but it was only two months uh, worth of their payroll. That $138 billion is ready to go with a flip of the switch uh, from Speaker Pelosi. And there's a number of other things uh, that we have tried to get through to her, uh, whether it is uh, relieving companies from lawsuits, uh, whether it's an additional stimulus, additional PPE, protective equipment money for schools. Uh, and she is taking an all or nothing approach. It's her four trillion dollars of a progressive wish list or nothing uh, with her. And it's beyond frustrating. I got to be honest with you. It is. It's infuriating. And uh, many of these businesses are never going to come back. Yeah, and a lot of these businesses were, oh, I just had one on the show earlier from California. Um, they're so badly hurt from this whole thing. They need this relief money. It hasn't been seen yet. And it's hard for these folks to watch politics play out um, because they can't get that relief. Um, it's a serious yeah. topic, too, with, with COVID. I understand you had COVID. Is that correct? What, what were your symptoms like, if any? That's right. Initially, I had no symptoms. And then day four or five, it really hit me pretty hard to be, to be candid. Uh, fever body aches. I lost 10 pounds. Uh, you know, I uh, ended up getting pneumonia in my chest. I mean, people should take it very seriously. Uh, and it is tragic, uh, the, the deaths that we're seeing across the country. But we're also seeing record numbers in terms of suicide. Uh, we're seeing kids really suffer with these. I, I just don't think lockdowns uh, are the answer uh, when you get into unemployment, addiction, suicide, I mean, all of those things have to be taken in. There's a county in Northern Virginia just outside of D.C. that's reporting 85 percent increase in failing grades from kids. That's going to affect them for their future and the rest of their lives. Uh, so it's about personal responsibility. Uh, you know, wear your mask, stay socially distant, stay away from uh, large gathering. And if you have a, a compromised family member, take that into account. But families need to be making these choices, not Washington, D.C., and in Florida, where we're, we're basically completely open, we're putting that individual responsibility uh, you know, on, on people and, and on their families to make those choices. Let's talk about that. Florida has seen a relatively low rate of hospitalizations and deaths as of recently. No mask mandates, no lockdowns in place in the majority of right. Florida there. Schools are open. Um, I want to show you this. this is an interesting comparison here. This is Michigan. The hospitalizations in Michigan for a seven-day moving average here. I think I have Michigan deaths as well. And you can see, again, it continues to move forward. But then I've got the national one. If we just kind of take an overall look at the hospitalizations there, it goes straight down. This is Florida, rather. Yours is down. You compare this to any state. You compare this on a national level. What is Florida doing differently as we look at this graph from the COVID tracking project? What are you guys doing differently <laughs> that other states are not doing? If I look here, the past 24 hours. We're focused. We're we're focused on the most vulnerable. The governor, Governor DeSantis, has done a fantastic job. He was my predecessor in my congressional seat. And he's focused on nursing homes, focused on the elderly, uh, getting hospitals what they need. We have to remember the goal was to flatten the curve so that hospitals uh, could, could handle this and not get overwhelmed, not lock down the entire country and have all of those other awful side effects that, that that I mentioned in terms of suicide, addiction, kids falling behind in schools. And, you know, in the school issue, which affects everyone, you know, what makes me so mad is it affects blue collar families the most. You can't, you can be a lawyer, an accountant, a journalist, an epidemiologist, and stay home and work from home with your kids. But if you're a truck driver, a construction worker, uh, a waitress, you can't, it's impossible. Uh, and so we're, the governors and, and uh, us as leaders have taken all of those things into account, but
but we're focused on what we've learned about the virus and who has hit the hardest. And in schools, for example, you, know, you can either go to school in person, you can do a hybrid, or you can do a virtual, perhaps if you have a, a grandparent or someone who's immunocompromised. Again, it's about families making those choices, responsible individuals and businesses making those choices. They don't want to get sick. They don't want their customers to get sick. They know how to be safe. They don't need uh, elect, you know, politicians telling them how to do it. And that's a different approach we're taking. It's working. Let me get your thoughts on the uh, president's continued fight for this election. This has been something we haven't seen the likes of which as far as how mass it's not just one state. There's a lot of challenges, but particularly in Georgia, where we're a month away from a Senate runoff. Not only is this creating a rift in the GOP, I'm sure you've read, uh, but this push could dissuade Republican voters here for seeing some Republicans not supporting President Trump. So some of those supporters they don't want to come out and vote in Georgia. What does the president need to do? Do you still support his continued efforts? Well, we need every single Georgia Republican, independents, conservative Democrats to come out and vote. Uh, I, can, I have a firsthand view of the bills that the progressives are passing out of the House, but you never hear about them because they die in the Republican Senate. Uh, that won't be the case if they flip the Senate. They'll get rid of the filibuster. They'll stack the Supreme Court. Uh, they'll go after the Electoral College, D.C. statehood, so they get two more senators, so we can't ever get back into power. Uh, they have to get out and vote. Meanwhile, the RNC, led by Ronna McDaniel, the Republican Party, the president's team are in Georgia in force to make sure what happened on November 3rd doesn't happen on January 5th. But you, Republicans, conservatives, you can't be dissuaded in Georgia. you got to get out there and vote. Meanwhile... The president needs to take his case to the court as he's doing uh, and uh, continue to show the fraud that happened. We've been calling it all year long with mass mail-in voting, how that exposes the country to fraud. And anybody who cares about our democracy should want those cases to be heard. Biden supporters should want those cases to be heard because Americans need to be confident in our electoral system. And I fully support the president in making his case. Well, the states have given the electoral votes to Biden. That's no secret. But Newsmax is still not called this election yet because of all the litigation that's happening. It is not about what you know. It's what you can prove in court. But despite right. that, do you truly believe that President Trump won this election? I believe that he if you count every legal vote and toss out every illegal vote, I do. Uh, again, it's what can we prove? And, uh, and you know, here's what the Democrats are doing. They're basically taking California ballot harvesting, where you can go weeks after the election in unlimited numbers with, uh, with activists, uh, and they know how many they lost by and how many to go get and who to go get them from. They're trying to take that nationwide, and they're doing it slowly and iteratively through state legislatures with a lot of these laws that were changed right before the election under the cover of, of covid uh, and so in many ways, they're taking these horrible practices and making them legal. Uh, and that's what's making this fight so difficult. The other piece is the Supreme Court needs to hear the case in Pennsylvania. There are some real meaty, difficult constitutional issues that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court completely overstepped its bounds. And I think that alone will tend uh, will put uh, Pennsylvania back in the president's column. We're going to be talking to Jordan Seculo, a part of the, um, the legal team, about that very topic coming up in just about 45 minutes. And, and that's great to ask right. which one could make to the Supreme Court. Uh, Congressman, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're OK uh, with your battle with COVID. You, you got through it all. Congressman Michael Waltz joining us live. Thank you for your time. All right. God bless.